Hey everyone, today we are doing a complete Lego Harry Potter wave review. So I have six brand new sets here on the table that are all launching on June 1st of 2023. Probably my favorite is definitely the Battle of Hogwarts. Part two is one of my favorite Harry Potter movies. I know that's maybe a little controversial, but this is what I'm really excited about. I know there's a lot of people talking about Creepy Dobby over there, so I can't wait to get into this. I do want to thank LEGO for sending all of these sets over for review. And with all that said, let's go into the in-depth for all six of these LEGO Harry Potter sets. So the first set is, again, my personal favorite, the Battle of Hogwarts, 730 pieces and $80. First up, the minifigures. We have Harry Potter and Voldemort in a brand new sand green color, which looks absolutely fantastic. I love the way these figures look. They both come with brand new wand molds, which has a stud on the end so you can attach the spell piece. Very cool looking. Next, we have Mrs. Weasley and Bellatrix, which looks fantastic with those dual molded arms. Seriously, those are such a standout on this figure. They also have dual sided faces. And then lastly, we have Neville as well as a Snatcher. So these two look absolutely fantastic. And Neville, of course, has the sword of Gryffindor and we have Nagini as well. Now making our way to the set, First off, the main feature for this courtyard Hogwarts section is that it can all be taken apart. So it's specifically designed so everything can kind of be modular and, you know, pushed apart. So if you want to really create like a physical like damage battle of Hogwarts, then you can do that. Personally, though, this sacrifices the main stability of the model, meaning that it's extremely fragile when you pick it up. You have to be really careful about it. So pros and cons, it's, it's a cool play feature, but personally speaking, I think they went a little too far with it. Inside you'll notice some small details like a fireplace, doors, as well as this sticker here. Very nice. And then on the top we have this nice sticker of a kind of broken, burnt clock tower area. That looks nice as well. Again, this is a real fun area to play with, but stability is a big issue. That's part of the play, but for me personally, it's a little too much in terms of how fragile the set really is. It is really fun to put all the minifigures around here and really recreate the Battle of Hogwarts in part two, which is a lot of fun. Now, because the set is so modular, even on the back of the box art, it shows that you can rearrange this into other things that you want it to be, including like a bridge, for example. But overall, it's an okay feature. Now, making our way to the second set, we have Dobby the House Elf. This is $35 and has 403 pieces. First off, we have Tom Riddle's diary with the sock inside of it. I love this. It's a great little extra Easter egg for Dobby. And then you can also see there's some stickers on the outside, making it very clear that it is Tom Riddle's diary and you can see the marking in the middle of when Harry put in the Baskalis tooth. So very cool, nice little details there. Next, we have the floating pudding. So this also looks really good. Very clearly was, you know, used by Dobby in the first scene of the second Harry Potter movie. Very nicely detailed, a nice little extra thing to have on the side. Now moving on to Dobby, as you can see, he is, in my personal opinion, kind of cool looking. I realize that this is very opinionated. I don't think he's creepy looking, but other people think he's creepy looking. I, I think his arms are a little creepy looking, specifically these new finger pieces that Lego just newly released with their like action figures from Marvel and DC and they're making their way on the Dobby. He does have a, like a nice little stand that says Dobby on it and that's a sticker right there. You can also adjust his feet as well as adjusting the head and the ears if you wanna add a little bit more expression to how he looks. Next, we have the Stag or the Expecto Patronum set. It comes with 754 pieces with a retail price of 70 US dollars. You get two minifigures in this set, a really great looking Harry Potter as well as Lupin. Both of these figures look fantastic and have dual head prints. And Harry also has that new one that's from the Battle of Hogwarts. And he also has great arm printing as well that looks fantastic. You can put both figures on the Expecto Patronum stand here, or you can just have Harry, it's up to you. Moving on to the Stag Patronus, there is actually a little bit more adjustability than you might expect, especially with the legs. You can pretty much make the legs look exactly the way you want. So if you wanna have the Stag jumping or something like that, it's pretty easy to do that. Now, you can't physically move the stand or the body, I should say, only the legs as well as the headpiece, and believe it or not, also the tail as well that is movable. So there is six different points of movability if you wanna customize and change the way the stag looks. There's also some really great details on the bottom side, utilizing these translucent blue and flower pieces. That looks great. And then there's even some sparkly translucent 
blue pieces spread throughout the build as well with this nice sand blue color. Overall, I think the build is really nice. I think this is only going to appeal to a certain type of Harry Potter Lego fan, but I think if you are a fan of this, then you'll enjoy it. Next is by far the worst Lego Harry Potter set I've personally ever seen. It's the Quidditch trunk with 599 pieces and a price tag of $68, such a weird price tag. And you're gonna get four minifigures. First off, taking a look at the trunk. On the backside, you have to store all of these different Quidditch pieces and it just doesn't look elegant, doesn't look great. So you have to take all of these off just to get into the trunk itself, which when you do take it off, it looks a lot better, honestly. I think the trunk has some really nice sticker details. None of this is printed, unfortunately, but at this price point, I didn't really expect much printing. I think the design is really well built. There's some great techniques being utilized here to achieve this trunk design. And you can even move, move these uh, side pieces as well to you know hold the trunk if you wanna do that. And it actually has a secondary purpose that we'll see in a minute. When you open it up, you'll see different uh, house flags as well as you'll see that you can store some of the minifigures in the set. You can store all the figures, but not all the figure parts. Very strange, and I'll show you what exactly what I mean there. You'll also find a trunk, and you'll see there is kind of like a Quidditch-esque field inside here. I see what LEGO's trying to do, like making this all work in one set, but it, it doesn't exactly work. First off, in terms of features, you can uh, put any Quidditch player. So in this case, I have Harry Potter here on this clear stand. And by utilizing that trunk tra chain piece, you can move it back and forth. But unfortunately, you can't have all four players flying at the same time. And then also included are these weird like play functions where you're supposed to like bounce off these discs. It doesn't make any sense to me. I, I understand Lego is trying to create some play here, but it doesn't work in my opinion. We also have some other accessories like a trophy, extra disc, and then inside this trunk, you'll find a snitch. I also think it's funny that you get a Lego trunk put into a trunk, if that makes sense. And then lastly, we have minifigures. There is a figure representing every single house in Hogwarts. So that's nice. And what's really cool is that you can actually switch out all of the faces and hair pieces to whatever you know you want to build, whatever player you want the your Hogwarts team to be represented. Maybe you're trying to build yourself. Maybe you're trying to build another character from the Harry Potter universe that you want to recreate. I think that's cool, but it also drives up the price of this set significantly, I think. That's why you're seeing $68, and it's really a small set for $68. And yes, you're getting four figures, and all these different hair pieces, but there really is no place to put all these extra accessories that Lego is including here. So you have to put them in a plastic bag and hope that you don't forget about where you place that. It just seems like a half-baked idea with the trunk. It just doesn't work in my eyes. The overall playability here is weak and I don't like this set. The next set is Diagon Alley Weasley's Wizard Wheezes at $90 and 834 pieces with seven minifigures. First up is George and Fred, which look really nice. I like their torso prints here and dual-sided faces. Next, we have Ginny and Ron, and I believe Ginny has a new torso print, but I could be wrong about that. I think both figures look good and both have dual-sided faces. Lastly, we have Hermione as well as two female witches. All of these figures look great. All of them have good torso prints, but unfortunately no leg printing. First up is a little side building called the Owl Post. So of course you have some owls here, including that golden owl right in the middle. It's a very small store, but it does look really nice. There's some little sticker details on the outside. And when you look on the inside, of course, because it's an Owl Post, you have all the different letters and there's a mailbox at the bottom, as well as a nice little sticker piece that has again, more mail on it. Very cool. Now moving on to the physical Weasley building, as you can see, it looks good. I think the face in the middle of the Weasley brother is very creepy. And I like the bunny coming out of the hat. I think, you know, that looks great. I love the sticker details on the outside. There's a lot of funny little Easter eggs, but a little creepy. Moving on to the inside, as you can see and expect, there's a lot of color here. Some great little Easter eggs, some, again, kind of creepy looking stickers here. But if you take the time and read all of this stuff, there's great little Harry Potter Easter eggs. I love especially this Umbridge light. There is even a few little printed pieces on these little balls right here, and there's lots of different details for you to explore and Easter eggs to enjoy. As you would expect, the Owl Post connects very easily into the Weasley building and making a bigger scene. This all comes together very nice with the figures inside, but it is a little cramped. Now, when you compare this to the Diagon Alley $400 set of the Weasley building, as you can see, the Diagon Alley $400 set is far more detailed and looks really nice and probably what I prefer. 
Lastly, we have the Hogwarts Express train set with Hogsmeade Station. This has the 1,074 pieces and retails for $130. Taking a look at the minifigures, of course, as you would expect, we have Harry, Hermione, and Ron, all with different accessories, back prints, and Hermione also has a skirt piece as well. Next is Draco Malfoy, as well as another Hogwarts student. Both figures look great. Both have dual-sided head prints and other accessories as well. Lastly, we have, of course, Hagrid, and then we also have the trolley cart lady and a conductor minifigure as well, only one of which has a dual-sided face. Moving on to Hogsmeade Station, first off, we have a little road sign that points towards Hogwarts and, of course, towards Hogsmeade. Moving on to the station itself, as you can see, it is a smaller build. We have a little owl in the window, which I think is a nice little touch. There's some sticker details, even a little bit of detail on the roof there. On the inside, you'll notice different stickers as well. You can see that owl has a letter, a little fireplace. Of course, we need a ticket to get onto the Hogwarts Express, and then we also have a sticker of Britain as well as a bathroom inside Hogsmeade Station. I love this. You can put whoever you want inside the bathroom and you might have some fun as well. <laughs> Next, we have the track sections. There's only four included in this set and then we have two end pieces which allow the train to go right up onto the track. So if you're on hardwood floors and wanna transfer the train onto the track, that's what those pieces are for. Now moving on to the actual train itself, the Hogwarts Express. As you can see, there's some nice details and you can even remove a pin in the front to make this actually go on curved track. You'll see that there is a very small area for the conductor of the train. He can't even stand up, so you have to have him sitting down and kind of leaning back, which is a little claustrophobic, but is what it is. It is a small playset. Then we have the little coal cart here with a little shovel. Again, not much detail. We have some stickers on the outside and not much else going on with it. Next, we have our first passenger car, which has five different windows on each side. It's a very simple build. As we look on the inside, you will notice that there is not much to be seen here. There's a little area for some luggage and four different seats. No other details to really be found. The secondary passenger car actually only has four windows on the side, and the reason being is this is where you can put the trolley cart on the back side. So it only has three seats instead of the four in the other area, and again, that allows you to put the cart on the back side or really any other large luggage. Lastly, here's the Hogwarts Express pulling up to the station on the train tracks. Looks nice, nice display area here. Lastly, what does the playset look like versus the collector's edition, which is a $500 Hogwarts Express train? Well, as you can see, there is a big size difference and there's a definitely a major uh, detail difference as well. So overall, these Lego Harry Potter sets are nice. Not the greatest, not the worst. Personally, the Hogwarts battle is my favorite, and I also actually like the Dobby figure. Maybe that's just me. Hey guys, so I helped David put together a few of these sets, and David asked me to share my opinion on these sets. Uh, so starting with the Battle of Hogwarts, I think the minifigs that were included in this set are really neat. The stickers inside and outside I think are also pretty cool. I don't think it's quite worth the price. I do think it's a little overpriced for this set, but again, it's pretty cool. And then moving on to Dobby. I think he looks kind of creepy with the nose and eyes. I think that they could have been made better, but the pudding is really neat and I think it looks kind of delicious. It makes me hungry. And then the Weasley's Wizard Wheezes set here is really cool. Uh, it's a bit smaller than the original. And the sticker of the face on the front, I think is a little creepy compared to the original, even though, you know, it's not blocky or anything. The um, colors and minifigs are really cool in this set. I would say this is Definitely closer to being worth what the price is, in my opinion. I would definitely buy this one. I do think that the modular sets are really cool, especially with Harry Potter. The Hogwarts Express, this one is pretty cool. Uh, it's a lot smaller than the Collector's Edition. And I think there's a little bit more to this one as far as the minifigures and you know, the little Easter eggs that are on the inside. So that's pretty cool. I do think it is a little overpriced, but not too bad considering the size. And then the 
Quidditch trunk, in my opinion, out of all of these sets, is my least favorite. It is really cool and I liked the concept of having a Quidditch set, but once you're putting it together and then, you know, closing the trunk and trying to make everything fit, it just doesn't work well. There are also a lot of extra pieces, which is cool. I like the, the different heads, the hair pieces, all of that. But again, there's nowhere to put them. And you know, everything falls apart uh, when you're trying to move things around and it's just really frustrating. And way overpriced for all of that difficulty and the, the pieces not fitting or falling off. And finally, the Patronus set. This is my favorite one out of all of these sets. I really like the color, the iridescent blue pieces. I like that you can do either a stag or a werewolf Patronus. And so you see down here at the bottom, there's Lupin and Harry, so you can do either of their Patronuses. But again, the, just the colors are really neat. I like the, the movability of it. It's really cool. And I just think it's really pretty. So overall, I do like most of them, and I would definitely buy the Patronus set and the Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, but overall I'd say that most of them are a little overpriced. But again, really cool sets. I love Harry Potter, so this is awesome. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great and wonderful day. <laughs> mm. That's not bad for the first time. Is my face red now? No. Nope. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, how did that one go? I don't know. You think it was better? <laughs>